they told us it is about sharing power amongst those in power and those who can access power we told them no it is about the empowerment of Mama Mboga, the empowerment of the border border gentlemen, the empowerment of the hustlers, the empowerment of the ordinary citizen. It is not about sharing power. They told us it is about leaders. We told them it's about the people. We told them it is about the people. We will tell them it is about the people. And on Tuesday, it is going to be about the people. So I want us to talk about something very important. And it's going to be kind of engaging in a way for the next few minutes as usual, and then we call it a time. I was having a conversation, a chat via WhatsApp with one of us actually in the channel here. And they texted me and told me that um, if we look keenly into how William Ruto gave a shot to his presidency, especially the moment he came to power, William Ruto kind of tried to borrow notes from the outsiders, from the presidents and leaders who he thought were giving better shots at doing economic recoveries. And one president that is almost the same as what William Ruto is right now, like when you check the economies, they are almost concurrently facing the same scenario, is the Ola Tinubu of Nigeria, that old man, okay? Remember, these two economies, they are only different in terms of their GDPs, but Kenya is a bit more robust and more democratic when you talk of the democratic space. In fact, what Nigeria is facing right now is even worse than what we are facing as Kenyans in the economic dimension. The Nigerians have gone to the streets very many times. The only problem is that they do not have the latitude of freedom that we have in our country. With placards reading, and bad government now and end hunger, residents of one of Nigeria's largest cities took to the streets on Monday. Large crowds marched through the center of Ibadan in the country's west. In fact, when you look at what we have in our case, our country is such a very democratic country. So far, if you compare with a number of countries in Africa. So when Tinubu came to power, you know, people expected that he would bring an economic recovery and freedom. The same, same language that William Ruto gave us, all right? Freedom is coming. You remember the song, UDA? Freedom is tomorrow. Kenyan behind. I want to tell you the great people of Kenya. I want to tell you the people of Nairobi, they say this was a constitutional moment. We told them no, this is an economic moment. They told us it is about changing the constitution. We told them no, it is about changing the economy. They told us it is about sharing positions. We told them no, it is about creating jobs for the young people of our nation. They told us it is about sharing power amongst those in power and those who can access power. We told them, no, it is about the empowerment of Mama Mboga, the empowerment of the border border gentlemen, the empowerment of the hustlers, the empowerment of the ordinary citizen. It is not about sharing power. They told us it is about leaders. We told them it's about the people. We told them it is about the people. We will tell them it is about the people. And on Tuesday, it is going to be about the people. And that is why I stand on this podium today to tell the people of Kenya, they should not be afraid. There is a God in heaven who is going to make sure Tuesday, the will of God is going to happen. That we will prevail over the deep state. The deep state will not stop us. The system will not stop us. The powerful will not stop us. This is going to be the culmination that the people of Kenya are supreme 
it is the people who hire and fire governments and we will prove them on Tuesday that it is the people of Kenya who will make the decision to take Kenya forward. Wakenya muko jameni. That is exactly what the people of Nigeria were expecting with Shudubu. But all of a sudden, the old man changed his two colors. In fact, everything shook. He removed the subsidies that were in place by the previous regime. Exactly what we saw William Ruto doing in our case. So based on that sequence alone, you might be tempted to agree with this one of us here who is saying that perhaps William Ruto is copying and pasting to us what is being done in Nigeria or the vice versa. Like these two leaders are copy pasting each other. They are sharing their notes. You see, where I come from in my village, the wise men have a saying that goes that the tail fat of a sheep is always compared with the sisters, meaning that it is compared with another tail fat of another sheep. So if you look at the comparison between Nigeria and Kenya, we are facing the same same economic times, only that the way we thought William Ruto would manage ours, we are seeing that he is being defeated. Now let us leave the issues of Nigeria and focus on our own. We deal with ours. You see what William Ruto is in right now is being described as imbroglio, a difficult situation. But because he is the one who actually created this, he has the law side and the standing to rectify it. If Kenyans are going to embrace William Ruto right now, if anything is going to happen before 2027, until we see that perhaps William Ruto has changed, then we'll be saying that he's like the prodigal son. So right now, William Ruto is still outside, but he can still come back as the prodigal son. And so in this analysis, I want to give you just two. Two areas that if William Ruto focuses on, it will be a game done. It will be a deal done for 2027, his re-election. And you will agree with me for these two areas. Let's tackle them in the next few minutes, ladies and gentlemen, and then we call it a time. But before we do that, in the event you are here for the first time, please make sure that you subscribe and join the team. Give the video a thumbs up. And give me a comment, leave a comment, share what you have with me. I gave my WhatsApp number. You can contact me in the WhatsApp. Just share and let's engage one another going forward. Now, first of all, you see the current difficult time that William Ruto is in, when you talk of the entire system, it's number one, the economic difficulty, and then number two, the political difficulty. The political difficulty can be rectified as time goes, but the economic difficulty needs an immediate intervention. Let's take a hypothetical scenario that William Ruto Tomorrow we wake up and we hear that, you know, William Ruto has scrapped all the taxation measures and policies that have been in place that people are feeling, you know, easy, easy see Mzuri Kwetu. Let us assume that we wake up and find something like that. You know, we'll go back to zero. And so it will not be very much viable for William Ruto to scrap all the taxation measures. But now what he needs to do is to stop digging the pit. We have found ourselves in this, actually, pit. If you look at the argument that the parliamentarians who are opposing the Finance Bill 2024 were giving in the parliament when they were discussing it, some of them who are very wise were very keen to note that if you recollect even the Finance Bill, Finance Act of 2023, we haven't seen the real aspect of what good it has for the economy. And then the government is again bringing Finance Bill 2024. We cannot even have a moment to benchmark that what was brought in 2023 brought some one to three goods. And we can actually hold our hands on them and say, anyway, if William Flo is bringing another bill, perhaps we will see the benefits like what we saw in the Finance Act of 2023. So we can't have a benchmark and even to say that However much it's going to be painful, but for a short time, in the long run, we are going to, to benefit. So William Ruto should not stop everything, but he needs not to continue digging the pit. That one will be an intervention that is very much appropriate for the economic sense. Because if you tell him to right now scrap everything, at a end to zero, at a pata pesa wapi, 
and the way things are with the demands of the Gen Z, without money, without provision of services, William Miruto will do nothing at the end of the day. So he needs just to re-strategize and concentrate on what has been. He needs to actually bank on the words of Musali Budabadi, although he confused and duped men to Musali Budabadi so much that, you know, within a twinkle of an eye, Musali Budabadi was a ship being led to a slaughterhouse. Budabadi said that if you find yourself in a pit, economically, the best remedy, if you want to get out of that hard economic time, you stop digging the pit. This is exactly what he needs to do. So we need not to see any other taxation, you know, policy framework that is a hindrance to the enthusiasm of the people operating in the economy. That is one thing that he must do. So that is the economic sense. When you go to the political sense, how did he engage with the people politically? How can he actually go back to the first love that he had with the people politically? Because at the end of the day, you know, after rectifying the economy, he will come and do politics. So he must make sure that balancing the love in politics that he has with the people is very key, a priority for him. And that will be defined by how he manages the economy. So for me, I don't see the big deal in the political angle. Even if he doesn't concentrate on maybe going back to the people, let him handle the economy. And once he has handled the economy, the political dimension will be taken care of. Because it is always better to come back to people and say, I need you to re-elect me because I have built for you this role. I have created a universal health coverage system that is working. And when you go to the hostel, this is the service that you get and you are very much happy with it. That one alone, you don't even need to campaign. It is by default setting the standards for you in the political dimension. Now, the last thing that I wanted to touch before I forget, you know, right now, uh, William Bruton needs to reconsider his stand on external borrowing. Borrowing is good, but the only problem comes with the utilization of the borrowed funds. Very important. We have discussed about it very many times. And even in Uru's regime, if you remember what Uru Kenyatta said, two billion getting lost in a single day. So even if borrowing is supposed to benefit you and relieve the people, accountability is very key. So when he reverses his standing on borrowing, he must also revise his standing in the accountability framework. And we see the practicality of what he's saying. We see him as a man who walks the talk. It will be again changed altogether. And the last thing that he needs to avoid at all times is duplicity. Double speak. If he does those, ladies and gentlemen, William Bruto can still have his 2027 well better placed for his re-election. I'm aware of Naija. Watch and escape to Kakwako. To Tawangia later. Have a great time.